right. So as I put in the email, I just was wondering if we could kind of move our agenda around because Julia asked, you know, wanting to, to really dig in on the on kind of the, the next steps. Um, and, and then I also just kind of combined the like work plan updates with the outreach updates conversations, thinking that those things were really like pretty intertwined, if that makes sense. Um, so kind of new agenda is putting the city budget discussion kind of first as our discussion item, then fundraising, then work plan, then other business. Does that all make sense? Yeah, I'll move to approve the revised agenda. Jeremy, do you want a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, and so it's like no public comments. Um, have folks had a chance to, to review and approve the, uh, review the um, November 5th minutes that uh, Michael sent out? Or should we take a moment to just look over those real quick? Take a quick look. Great. Jeremy, when you're ready, do you want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Sure. Um, I move that we approve the minutes. Uh, Helen, do you want a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So on to kind of our big discussion item of um, the city budget. So how is it we could frame the I? And Jeremy and I talked, this is mostly Jeremy, so <laughs> give credit on how to frame this conversation is just to like share some updates of like where the city council's at, like what, what, what are we dealing with here? What, what are kind of the, the feelings or the things that are getting brought up? Um, and then just talk about some like different processes that we could go about doing this of providing some recommendations and then to dig into to what that would be um, before going into some next steps. So, you know, whether that is a rubric or a set of values that we want the city council to hold onto while, while having these budget discussions or something completely else, um, we'd kind of love to, to hear thoughts about that. So does that sound good for like how to have this conversation? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So- Can you just remind me, did, did Cameron go through just like the, the process would that be helpful before we would, yeah let's yeah. do that Maybe, yeah do that first, great if you're willing Cameron oh, of course I have been talking about the budget all day today so I will <laughs> continue to talk about the budget so um what our process is uh, normally I'm going to sort of explain a normal year because this is not a normal year um we as staff uh sort of work together as departments to come up with a uh, usually a proposed budget that fits what sort of threshold of tax raises or tax uh, stipulations that council guides us with. Um, we come up with a budget that fits within those confounds. We have, you know, various priorities, different areas where we draw priorities. Um, right now we're really strongly sticking to our uh, strategic plans and our, so the other city plans that guide what we do on the daily and um, then we together as a sort of city departments hash that out and then present it to council. Council goes through it. We have a couple of public hearings for the budget, um, which are really important. And then uh, the council approves that. It goes to the voters for town meeting day and then folks vote on it. Um, people can petition to be on the ballot where they, they can ask council to be added to the ballot or they can go get signatures and vote on the ballot. So this year is significantly different for a few reasons. Um, one, we don't have any money. Uh, our <laughs> are down uh, almost $2 million. So we have to make up that deficit heading into fiscal year 22, um, which for folks who are not familiar with the fiscal years doesn't start until next July. So we're talking about a budget that's going to 
come into effect next year. So we've already um, sort of taken a lot of austerity measures for this fiscal year that we're in right now. Um, this is, we're talking cuts for next year. So this will be sort of a long lasting impact for our community, honestly. So we went into budget Congress today. We'll be having follow-up meetings tomorrow uh, individually, but we went into this year with a couple of assumptions. Our biggest assumption, I think, is that um, it's almost unconscionable to bring a that comes forward with a tax rate hike. Um, we know our community is struggling and we're right there with them and we don't want to burden the community anymore. So the budget that we'll be proposing to council does not include a tax rate increase. Mm -hmm. um, but because of that, our we had to cut our budget 25, 20%. Um, to keep that uh, accurate. And so our focus has really been on core functions. And so I think that y'all will be interested in, in sort of what that means. Um, a lot of our, you know, I can't say for certain because it's not presented to council yet, but a lot of the things that are on the table, well, everything's on the table. I should say that right now. Everything's on the table, but a lot of that the things that we can cut that are not core services are one of them are the more community service oriented aspects of the city. Um, the things we cannot cut are fire, police, and DPW or public health and safety. Um, that's not to say they haven't taken big cuts and are not looking at big cuts. Uh, staffing reductions in the way of um, holding positions open and not hiring people. Because um, one of our, the other big assumptions that the city took this year is and equipment over people. We do not anticipate the budget that we present to council, including any uh, live person position cuts. So uh, we're, that's, we're just holding everyone's job stable. It means moving some folks around, but it doesn't include laying anyone off. Um, something new that we're doing this year is a budget survey, which we'll be turning to our committee to really help us spread through whatever um, channels we have through each of those committees, um, try to feel uh, what the community wants. And so uh, that's sort of a new adventure for us. We have a new department head in our finance department really interested in getting more community feedback. Uh, we had a couple planned um, extra budget meetings um, as like staff, it's just a like listening session with the community, but obviously that's been tabled for this year. So um, all in all, it's a pretty difficult budget year. I'm uh, all editorialized here to say I'm really proud of the team for the work they've already put in on coming up with this budget. So I'm interested to hear any feedback that y'all have or any questions that you have going into this already. That was definitely a monologue, I apologize. That's helpful, thank you. No, 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 that was exactly what I wanted to hear, yeah. Um, and so sorry, so the budget survey is getting sent out, but there is not a public meeting plan. Yes. Or, no, there, are, there yes. are the public meetings. There are some like right. legal public, yeah. we just wanted to do extra ones. We had very high hopes going into meeting. this okay. year that yes. we were going to do extra budget public hearings, listening sessions with community members, and it's just not going to happen. But the one with council is happening. Um, Cameron, the budget survey, you said there was a, a person in finance who's kind of taking point on that. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know more about what the survey includes and the kind of timing of all that. Um, is there any way you could make an introduction to this person so we could- Yeah, she's our finance it? director. Her name okay. is Kelly Murphy. Um, she is currently writing the survey. I anticipate that will go out uh, around the time we present it to council just to know what they're responding to. Yeah, yeah. And as far as I understand it, she's basing a lot of her questions for this year off of what the state does. Okay. And then the timeline is that the city council has to approve this by January, yes. is that right? Okay. I can just add one thing to this, and that is that the um, the the Montpelier Fund Committee, which which reviews and uh, recommend makes recommendations to the city on 
non-government support, the government support of, of non-government um, um, service and arts groups. Um, we we are we were told we would that we should have as a target no more than what we um, requested last year. Um, I haven't heard yet whether that we got word from Bill that we should be reducing that number, but that those are the people who used to petition for money on the city right. ballot. And now instead of doing that because that ballot got so long, people objected to it. Um, all of those requests come in as, as part of an application which our committee reviews and looks at for past performance with previous year's funding and then makes a recommendation to the city council, which they, it's really an all or nothing kind of thing. They've never done uh, cherry picking with our recommendations, but um, we'll be meeting, prob let's see, I think the deadline is right after Thanksgiving. So we meet in December and then present our, uh, our, our report to the city right after, at the, at the beginning of the budget session, I think. So we'll have more details on what our recommendations are to council soon. It, it did sound to like, I mean, I guess a couple thoughts. I think saying that like zero tax increase, I wouldn't take that for a given. I think like no, absolutely no. like that, that the 20% tax increase or something that we would need like a met, like no one's going to do that obviously. I, but I, I think there were mixed feelings on council about um, appetite for tax increases. And I think that's going to be a function of like, what are we losing? So at a time when people need services more than ever, what are we cutting versus tax burden on the community? So I think, and that's where I think the, this, this group's kind of how, what do we look at? And like your great question, Cameron, of like, what, what do we as a community consider essential services that the city's providing? And like, you know, where is the state stepping up or not versus like what the community is doing? So I think that's where it's just like wrestling with this. I mean, like personally, I'm very like anti-austerity government approach. And so it's like driving me crazy that we're kind of forced into this box. And, but as a city, you have very limited tools for, you know, like as the state, they could do like a wealth tax or something. And we don't have like the ability to do a whole lot of things like that. Um, one idea that did come up in council um, was you could do like a base budget and then you could have a kind of next tier thing that you put on the ballot and see if voters want to approve something that would increase their taxes, um, but provide a different set of services. So, you know, I think there are some ways to think through um, that's, yeah, really ways, ways to to see you know what is the appetite of the community and the ability of the community I mean you know there's there's yeah it's just it's all tough but thank you Cameron for laying that out I guess I, thank you Lauren I, I will also say like when I say no tax increase I don't say I'm not saying that that's what's going to be improved we just are bringing that sort of baseline to council because there's some things that will inevitably be added back into like our crazy cuts because we made crazy cuts. Got it with 20%. <laughs> yeah. Does the city have a rainy day fund the way the state does? And if so, is there a policy about how to use it? And um... Yes and yes, but ours is currently uh, under what it should be for policy. So there's no using that. Uh -huh. Okay. Huh. because of the fiscal situation that we've been put in. It's not, okay. Yeah, anyone else like go to these meetings or like just have any other like reactions or, or yeah. Well, I, going into I was meeting. able to watch the, um, the recorded council discussion, Cameron, that you sent, um, which was really, I found it incredibly interesting um, and not dry or boring at all. Um, <laughs> Wow. So, <laughs> High praise. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's what I was, so I was struck by a couple of things watching that conversation. Um, and Lauren, you'll have to correct me if I'm mischaracterizing anything because I'm kind of like popped in with no context and just observing that one conversation. But um, first, I was struck at just how difficult this is to wrestle with. Um, I mean, with, a, with the size of the city's budget a nearly $2 million deficit, like it's almost insane 
<laughs> to think that's what the, the current state is. Um, so I was really struck by how difficult um, this, this process will be because of that. Um, I think the other thing, and this could be just because of the conversation that I saw in council, but I was, I was, it was curious to me how I didn't hear much in the way of like, what are the things that help you make decisions about the budget, like the tools at hand, whether it's, you know, guiding principles of some kind or, um, you know, strategic priorities. Um, and I know that the city has those, of course, um, but in that conversation, it felt like um, it was quite wide ranging and it, it wasn't clear to me, like, what do people hold on to when they have to make these really hard decisions? Um, and so seeing that and thinking about what role we could play, um, I, I found that really interesting. Um, it's also, I don't quite understand the budget process. I do much more now, Cameron, since you laid it out. And it, it certainly does seem like yeah. the city staff and the city manager, um, I mean, they have to build the budget because they know the numbers, they know what their operations are and what their, their costs are and everything. Um, so I understand kind of putting that on them to build a budget um, much more so than I did uh, at first. And, and so I'm, I, I'm thinking again, like, so what does council use to make these really hard decisions and then recommendations back to the city? Um, and I, I don't know, Lauren, if you have more insight on that from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, I do think like the touchstone that Cameron referenced is the strategic plan that we developed, although um, we kind of developed that as the, at, it was like right after the pandemic this year. So we kind of knew, but we didn't really know what we were in for, um, but we knew everything was different, but we didn't know how or for how long. Um, and, but, and then like part of that are some kind of like guiding values that didn't change this year much. Um, and so, but they're like very broad, like a welcome and inclusive community and like things like that. Like, so I, I think that's like the premise that, you know, like guides it. And since, since I've been on council, which is not very long, it's been more like there's like the core services we provide and the city staff know best and they bring it to us. And then there's like the things around the edges of like that it would be nice to do. And, and what can we actually, you know, put together as a package that seems like something that, you know, will, will be supported by the community and that the community would be happy with, um, you know, like a, a reasonable tax rate to propose to people mm -hmm. for, um, and so it's like, so that's, that's been the discussion. So then this year, yeah, it's a totally different thing of like how, how do you think through mm -hmm. massive cuts? Mm -hmm. um, and where does that come from? And like, what are the kinds of things that you know, to me, like minimize long-term damage to the city government and to the community mm -hmm. um, that can kind of like get us through and then what can we make up later through. But yeah, yeah, so if you, it, I feel like the previous experiences I've had are like not that useful for this moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah. I'm just, oh, go ahead, Karen. Oh, just to respond. Um, Again, um, I was also struck by the council discussion in terms of there's this tension between kind of reacting to this moment and like the break fix mindset and also thinking strategically, you know, two, three, four years out, where do we end up on the other side of this? Um, and so that, that also kind of reinforced to me like, yeah, what are those like solid principles you can use to make really hard decisions that you know, may not be popular now, but have a kind of eye on what happens, you know, in the long term. Um, so it, it's, yeah, really challenging. And I was just going to ask, I feel like I was kind of coming in with, um, I don't know, if a, not a more confrontational approach, but it's just being like, what, what can we like, you know, what can we propose to like make this the best it can? And I think I'm, I, I want to hold that and be like, what would be useful for the city council and for like guiding these budget conversations in, in order to best have these conversations, I suppose as well. Do you have like any insight as to like what, what type of tool or, or, or product or um, yeah, anything like that?
I mean, generally, I would think if if it's principles and there's examples of what you mean, like the more tangible it can be, it would probably be more helpful. Um, I mean, I, I do think like there's a general, you know, there, there's this real tension of like, what are we asking people to pay? And then what are we providing for people? And it's real. It's like for some people, a tax increase is going to be a real burden right now. Other people, it's fine. And they would probably happily contribute to providing more services and like where you draw that line. And so I think like which things for the community to pay, like I felt like there was, there was definitely a, an erring towards like let's maintain or like zero out taxes because that just no matter what and like to me that's not a given it's like keep it low yes but like if it meant the difference between being able to like provide homelessness services right now like I would want to pay that little bit more like what are the so I don't know just like I feel like it's really hard to do theoretically so once we get the budget hey Isaac I'm on a call thank you <laughs> um like I, I think it could become more real of like looking at like what are the real choices we're facing um, yeah. And so I, I think, you know, I don't know for today if that's almost, I'm like, almost like once we get to the point where we know what are the choices that we're facing, like it's almost too late because then it becomes so like not too, it's never too late. Right. But you know, like if, if there is a way to have a more like principled conversation so that going into those, like there is like a common understanding of like what, yeah, I think that's what I was hoping we could do on this call before before going into more of the specifics does that does that resonate or i feel like my words are just been failing me all week and they're never great anyway are, you, are so. you talking about Shane? are you talking about the council in general or about our our role our, our position vis-a-vis -vis the budget in the council I'm not totally following, but I think I'm, I was, you know, if we can provide a, a, you know, draft of like some, you know, from social economic justice advisory committee, here are a set of principles that we want the city council to hold on to before like, and get agreement around those principles before going into the actual nitty gritty conversation yeah. of like, all right, we're going to provide this much less in order to hold taxes this, you know, like it, but, but, okay. so that there before it gets to the point where it's specific. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that clarifies that. Okay, cool me yeah i i think having that for the first meeting that we're looking at the budget would be really helpful i mean it i think normally at that point like the budget mostly is done to be honest and it's really like nibbling around the edges um because it's the city staff that really are the experts and like what most of the core functions are gonna are gonna be and have already heard the council's kind of strategic vision and priorities and that's like embedded in it usually, um, that's pretty well synced up. But this year is such a different year mm -hmm. that I think it'll be a much more robust back and forth, I'm guessing. Um, so I, think I, so I don't accurate. think it's, so yeah. I don't think it's too late mm -hmm. to be, I think it will yeah, really I've, be I've like never been to robust a budget conversation December. <laughs> yeah. does, that, does that feel right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do, um, like I said, we've, we've really stripped this down and it's going to be a political Cool discussion on what gets added back right so um you know that's i think that's really accurate um I, like i said our our real assumptions were don't cut people keep it level funded focus on core services so people can travel and live safely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i guess i'm i'm really hearing that like some J just what we could probably you know best uniquely contribute is not necessarily like a rubric or a like criteria or things like that but this kind of set of core principles or values does that sound right i think that would be helpful yeah michael jeremy does that sound yeah right i there? think i think you know i had and i can share a little bit if that if it's interesting to people i did some research this week just to try and see how people might be thinking about making decisions, but also specifically budget decisions um, with 
you know, social, economic, racial justice principles in mind. Um, and some of those tools that you shared, Shanna, um, were really instructive in that. Um, I think, yeah, I think to build like a robust process or tool, I think that's a longer term kind of move because you wanna get the experts on board with building a budget from day one with all of these kind of principles built in. Um, and that's a, that's a longer term kind of transformation process where, you know, down to like this specific city department, they are building a budget that is incorporating these particular values and principles, whatever they might be. Um, so I think that's, that's an interesting opportunity for the long, long term, but the short term is really what, you know, how can council apply a filter or a lens to the budget at a little bit of a higher level with which they can use to say, you know what, this is gonna impact certain members of our community in a really negative way. Um, and, and why is that? What can we do to mitigate that? And also look at trade-offs. I mean, it's gonna be about trade-offs and um, kind of difficult conversations. Um, and so what are the questions that council might ask? to be able to have that conversation and just to see what maybe uh, intended and unintended consequences might be with um, you know, a pretty severe kind of change to the budget process. Hi, Julia, we're still in our first uh, major agenda item of the budget. Yeah, cool. And yeah, we're, we're, we're just talking about the, the principles that we, um, of, of like what would be the most useful tool or um, and, and how to enact that that CJAC could bring to the city council. Yeah, and to the city, I should say. Um, and so like with that, yeah, thank you, Jeremy. I guess I'm I'm feeling a little stuck on how to move forward. Because I don't know if we're gonna be able to like brainstorm what that list of questions and things should be. And um, I am now kind of wondering if we should have had this conversation two weeks ago. So that at this point we could have like a, a a draft to like work off of um, because also recognizing that by the time we have our next meeting, it's going to be like in like deeply in the process. Um, so well, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of really good yeah. ideas, like just writing these things down, like when you make budget decisions, what Jeremy just said, keep in mind the unintended consequences or who in the community this choice would be impacting the most. Like those are those are perfectly valid guiding statements that I just heard being said by committee members, you know? Yeah. I mean, I have, I don't know where we are with time and agenda um, and I certainly don't wanna monopolize our time. Um, I do have some examples of those kinds of questions um, that I could either show you or just um, read through. Um, I, but yeah, I don't know where we are with the agenda and what time allows, so. I mean, I think like 15 or 20 more minutes on this, bef yeah, before going into the outreach, does that make sense? Because I think we'll just, we're just like whizzing through names and, and dates and things okay. for the rest of the agenda, so. I don't, it may not even take that long. Um, Great, yeah. I don't know protocol here with Zoom. Can I share my screen? Is that appropriate? Yes, yeah. And I think Cameron might need to make you no, or you not? I can't. Nope, I have. So. I have okay. opened that up. Okay. So so I'm, I'm going to share my screen, which is just a, it's a little bit more visual way that I work that'll help me kind of. That's great. Um, share some things that I found. Okay. Here we go. It's my fancy virtual whiteboard tool. Oh wow! So I think you can see that. It is really small for me. Oh, there we go. Yes. That's so it's okay. You all have different devices. Um, I'm going to read this, um, but just to give you a sense of, so a couple of, and it was quick research, um, but a couple of things that were really interesting that I'll just point out. So this was something that you've already looked at, I believe, as a group, the, um, and I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's a racial equity toolkit that I believe you drew upon to create your worksheet, equity worksheet at some point. Um, and I found that these particular 
three questions were perhaps a great start to this discussion. Um, and so they need to be customized for our particular needs, but you know, so what are the racial equity impacts of this particular decision? And so you could apply that to like this departmental budget or this specific item in a budget. Um, the second question, who will benefit from or be burdened by this particular decision? So that gets you thinking about, okay, who are, who all are the different kinds of stakeholders that might be affected in some way by this particular budget decision? Um, this third question is interesting, you know, thinking about what happens if there are unintended consequences to this budget in some way? Um, are we thinking kind of upfront about how we might address those things in the event that they do happen? Um, so, and those are very high level questions. They're not, so, it's not a very detailed kind of look at anything specific, um, but they, I think they start a conversation around embedding kind of those, those social and economic and racial justice values into the discussion. Um, and then quickly, I'll just show you this. I shared this document late in the afternoon, so I don't expect anyone had seen it, but it was, it was a really interesting document from the city of Portland, Oregon, um, who has, and they have built, um, I think they've got a lot more robust infrastructure for dealing with equity issues in their city government, but they have built uh, a tool that, um, and this speaks to kind of a longer term process, They're, they've built a tool that city departments um, kind of embed into their budgeting process. So everybody, it seems it's socialized throughout the entire city government. Mm -hmm. um, but budget, you know, my overall assessment of the budget. Um, it's, so it's questions like, um, are you considering issues of equity in the budget overall? Um, it's um, looking at things like, um, is there anything in your budget that you've realigned? I'm assuming that either advance or hit equity issues. Um, and then it, it moves to looking at specific programs or services. Um, so for example, how does this program or service align with the goal of advancing equity and whatever your plan might be? This is their particular plan that they're referencing. Um, they've specifically called out some stuff around ADA, so um, accessibility guidelines. Um, they're looking on impacts of their own workforce. Um, and then also interesting, which was cool to hear, Cameron, you talk about the budget survey. Um, there's a set of questions here about the public engagement um, involvement with the budget process. Um, so understanding you know, are you targeting, are you looking at specific communities who might be marginalized and impacted by these more adversely than others? Um, and are you kind of engaging with those folks to kind of discuss the possible inequities that a budget might include? Okay, so that's a lot of content I just threw at you. Um, I, I think I just offer that up as an example um, in my research of the kinds of you know, it's not really a rubric, it's kind of discussion questions that might help um, council think about the budget differently. Do you mind just scrolling over to the right there too? Oh, this right that? here? Yeah, or the identifying impacts worksheet? Yeah, this was in that same um, Portland oh, okay. toolkit. Um, and it was, I mean, this is, this was kind of more of a, a rubric type of tool to um, look at either different line items or perhaps different department budgets. Um, and yeah, I like this as well because it, it kind of starts to break out um, group stakeholders that might be impacted um, by each budget kind of line item um, and then consider potential positive and negative impacts. So. Um, Jeremy raises an interesting question. We did give the city council a toolkit, right? That was a year and a half ago. Is that right, Julia? Yeah, the equity assessment. The yeah, equity it assessment? was like summer 2019 when I, that so, was the final draft, yeah. So can we 
to resurrect that? I mean, I think it's, it's I think it's kind of gone buried. But could we pull it up and and maybe um, pass it? Remind them that we sent it to them and send it to them again. I mean, that much of what Jeremy is saying here, if I'm remembering it correctly, um, is stuff that we we included in what we sent. Is that your recollection, Julia? Oh yeah. <laughs> Shana, is that what you just sent out? That's what I just dropped in the chat. Yeah, Jewel, oh, okay. I, could, I couldn't even find it in my computer to be able to reference, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's been that, a while. Yeah, so maybe if, you know, if it's close enough to the, the kinds of questions that Jeremy's found in the Portland, we can remind the city council that we have, you know, we worked on this and sent it forward to them and recommend that they use it in their um, in their deliberations because that would uh, that would eliminate pardon the cliche reinventing the wheel i would argue against that michael just looking at it not i mean i have no uh, okay I, I haven't seen it in a long time so yeah. we'll look at it a long time so i don't just know looking at it it's for proposed efforts or initiatives right and it's a toolkit to walk you through the creation of uh, intended outcome of an effort or initiative, which is not a guiding principle to, to council to just have in their minds when they're making budget decisions, right? It's not yeah. the thing, it's a toolkit for something completely different. But are the questions the, the same, are the criteria the same? No. No. Okay. I mean, there's, it's similar, but if you look through it, it's a pretty, it's a five page worksheet. Yeah. For creating a proposal. And if you're, if you're wanting something quick to give to council that states like those three questions that Jeremy said, like just, yeah, okay. up, you know, what are the racial impacts? Who's going to benefit? And how do you mitigate unintended consequences of your cuts or your additions back into the budget? That's pretty important. Yeah. So, okay. Again, that's, that's yeah. That's the history been... of, of that document though, that, that like, so that equity worksheet came out of GARE which yeah. is, and, and like those three questions are sort of like, those three are what sort of like feed, like this is the way that it's it's written here. Like they're, they're, they feed into that document. So they're sort of the, the bedrock of that document. So um, it is, we can remind them like, hey, we did, we did, we started this work. We sent this to you a while ago. This is connected to the work that we've been doing and that you have <laughs> approved for, so, for a while. And here are these three basic questions that we encourage you to stay present with each, you know, at each major intersection of the budget conversation. Yeah. And I, and I would recommend um, also, like, I like that chart that, that was at the, in, from the Portland um, up there. Like, I, I think, I, I think it would be important to maybe even list out some populations we want them to be thinking about as they're in particular, as they're um, like, how will this impact folks with disabilities? How will this impact folks yeah. li living in poverty and ho or housing instability? How will this affect LGBTQ folks in our, yeah, it, 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 here we go, thank you. Yeah, I pulled that out <laughs> of your, your equity worksheet, yeah. And I have that spreadsheet up and then on my other screen, I've got our Montpelier focus group contacts for our outreach too. So that might even be you know, also another good way to kind of overlay them. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing is almost just like a one page like cover letter that would be helpful to, to draft up being like, yeah, here are our main questions that we want you to hold while having these conversations. Remember that we did this. Feel please call on us as a resource. Is that, I mean, does that feel like enough and appropriate for for next steps here. So the the, the letter would be the, the three main questions, the, the chart and the marginalized population and the list of marginalized populations. And um and pointing pointing back to the faculty toolkit. Right. Right. But, but with the caution, though, that of what Cameron said, that the equity yeah. tool that we that we sent them was for new things, not. So we're asking them to use it adaptively, not uh, and we're not going to adapt it. We're so, asking them to ask those three questions, I think, right. like the, 
look at these three, three, three questions when you're looking at the budget. Make sure you're asking yourself these three things. Okay. But and, and I, I think when Shana said pointing back to that, she meant mm -hmm. tell me if I'm wrong, Shana. But I think my the way that I heard that was like like connecting the work. Like you've seen yeah. this before. This is another iteration of work that you've seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I think it would be good to do it that way because there's I think three new cat two new new folks. There's, there's new yeah. folks who have not seen it. Yeah. Uh, so getting that in their hands as well as the tying it specifically and easily, which it sounds like this would do to the budget decisions that will be in front of everyone. Wow, that was efficient, Jeremy. guys. Nice work. Yeah. Well, Thank you, Jeremy. For, <laughs> I know it was efficient for us because of all the work you did. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> I'm so glad you're a new member. Yay. Like, this is so great. And um, would, can we call any, can you draft up this letter to circulate to our team so that we can, like, finalize by email maybe before Thanksgiving to send out to the next, yeah, I can, for the next I meeting? Yeah, I can put a draft together. Um, you know, Lauren, there was some interest in a, a kind of like a thing like this grid over here. Is that a step too far? Is it really just about kind of like these bulleted questions? I like including it. I mean, you almost could make that the back, like some mm -hmm. people print out. So if people, I mean, I could see actually as we're doing it, I think that would just encourage like people maybe jotting down notes or like really thinking through it in a way that just the questions probably different thinkers or learners might find it okay. <laughs> helpful. Uh, my only thing about finalizing stuff is remember you're not to respond all, so making it a inappropriate public meeting. So if Jeremy sends out a draft, just send your reply to Jeremy so that he can make it a one thing. Then you send out a final don't have public conversations. Okay. So. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you yeah. for that reminder. Totally Oops. forgot. But it's okay for us to, is it, can we, is it okay for us to say, Jeremy will finalize this based on individual feedback from the group and then it will be final? Like, do we yeah. have to approve sending it to city council? Uh, no, if you not, if you approve it right now the, for him to do that. Any concerns with Jeremy taking on this task, finalizing our feedback and but mostly just leaning on Jeremy's work. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Great, happy to help. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, so exciting. Do we have to make a motion um, for that? No, that would be a good idea, I think, to have it in the minutes oh, as okay. a motion. Um, so I'll take it as Julia, Julia making I move. move that we yes. authorize Jeremy to create a first draft, incorporate individual feedback, and then finalize the draft to send to city council ahead of okay. our next meeting. Okay, I'll I make a move second. Oh, so oh, share sorry. a second, okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. Motion passes. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Now we just have the whole rest of our agenda. Awesome. <laughs> so, but I do, I think some of these things are pretty quick. Um, just, you know, fundraising check-in. I was still thinking we could do this before Julie really gets on, but I, I just connected with Lolita. We're working on a, a, a grant that's due January 15th. That's like my, and I, um, you know, had sent in a bunch, a couple of other um, individual donations, and Julia has sent out thank you notes. Um, any other fundraising um, updates or check-ins? I submitted a grant. I submitted a grant to the Awesome Foundation. Hey, that was awesome. Yes. <laughs> Do you mind just sharing that? So I just, like just can have all of the ones that we've submitted, or it's fine if not. It Never might mind. have been. It was just like an a form. online form. Let me see. Which of the what, Shana? Which of the ones that you just sent out? You, you said you sent. We just sent those two out oh. before our last meeting. Oh, okay. So there's, we, yeah. we haven't. I haven't sent in a new oh, okay. proposal right. since our last. Meeting. Oh yes, I have it. I can. They sent me a copy, so I can forward it to you, Shana. Awesome. 
was trying to pretend to have some semblance of organization after losing this document that we spent months working on. So, um, thank you. Any, yeah, so about anything else? Any other upcoming deadlines that folks need help with? Okay, cool. We're gonna have um, you publicly announce the grant that you got? We haven't gotten it yet. Oh, okay. no, we did get that one grant. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? The Ben and Jerry's one? Yeah. Yeah. And then, Michael, you had sent out an email saying that we should publicly recognize something or put out a press release while I was sick, and so I've forgotten what that was. Can you, do you remember? Or I can try to pull up my email right now. <laughs> That was I know. last week. How can I remember? I can, <laughs> yeah. I can hardly remember this morning. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm just remember now. I don't know. I'll, I'll look through email and see if I can find it. But, well, but as a next step, I will publicly announce our first grant and encourage people to support our work. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. And so then for outreach, um, why, oh, I lost, yes, I'm so sorry. Okay. So work plan and outreach. So um, Julie and I met with um, Keisha and Sue and Tabitha last week as well, um, just to, to check touch base again on, on our, on our plan. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing that I wanted to share was to share our focus group contacts form. Um, and just, we would come up with like a tentative update about the point person and contact information. I wanted to check in and make sure that that um, looks right to folks and have you know, folks kind of take on that um, like ownership and responsibility. And then the other thing that they had flagged was uh, just wanting to get like the, uh, a commitment from the city around um, taking action on the recommendations coming out of this process. And just like thinking that we would get more um, opt-in, you know, from participants, like knowing that by, you know, volunteering their time or, or participating in this process, that there's gonna be like an outcome from that, you know, like in addition to the, the MOU or things like that, of just saying like, this is really important to this, like almost like a mission critical statement from the city. Um, am, I, am I capturing that right, Julia? I'm um, well, confused. my internet. Yeah, no, I, I want to know what they want, like what the output is, other than so, the commitment of our staff. Yeah. So um, I missed what you said, Shana. So forgive me if I my internet got funky. Repeat. So for minute, forgive me if I repeat anything. But um, I think it was. I think it was something like, like this. Something she gave us an example, like the city commits to um, implementing, like. X, Y, or Z within three to six months of this process ending, or, you know, like, um, and then, you know, and, and I can't remember exactly how she put it, but she put it in this way where, um, it was sort of like something like the city commits to implementing at least like two things within three to six months that come out of the, the equity deep dive, um, that are you know policy related and then like a longer term kind of commitment as well um or yeah i mean i think a way to show that the city has teeth that they are willing to sink into this process and that when people participate they know that there's going to be some sort of movement it's not going to be like another time when people come and share their ideas and nothing happens um so you know, something lo like low hanging fruit related type of thing within three to six months. And we can ask again. I'm really, it, I mean, I'm fine with that. I mean, that's really the goal of this whole process for us. Um, you know, I'm still going to say things like I'm still going to have to have caveats like budget depending, honestly, if it's something that requires funding. Uh, but, you know, we're this is the, this is, that's the why we're doing this. So there's no problem writing a statement like that. So I think maybe, maybe it, we could, it could be written so that like, you know, um, I imagine there will be budget neutral suggestions that will come out of this process. Um, and, you know, you could commit, I think we could sort of ask the city to commit to, 
you know, implementing immediately or like as soon again within three months, like any budget neutral decisions that are I, like, I, I, like, yeah, yeah. And then uh, looking at budget budget related ones for a longer term implementation or whatever. Um, can I bring that to y'all your next meeting, a draft of what that would look like from the city? Yeah, and I'm just um, like, I think we're like addressing this to Cameron and I'm also like, and would it could, would, would we want the city council to also like. Well, that would need to go in front of them. It would need to go in front of the city council. Great, cool. <laughs> yeah. Does that, so does that, my goal would be to get you a draft by your next meeting, maybe to put it on council's agenda for the night. Wow. Maybe. Yeah. That would be really, really. Yeah, like, <laughs> you're ambitious. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, you know, we're very budget focused right now, but I don't see why that couldn't be part and parcel of that uh, consent agenda even. Warren, do you think that would be appropriate for that sort of space or? I was just thinking, sounds like a good consent agenda thing. I mean, obviously someone could pull it off if they wanted to discuss it, but. So when we're, we are recruiting people, we can be like, and, you know, we do have a commitment from the city. Yeah. Okay. And, and, awesome. and, and, and so you know, there, there are two drafts you're talking about, Cameron, one to this, one to the, to Frazier for the staff and the one to the city council. No, Those are, it would just be the city uh, while embrace like embarking on this journey with creative discourse agrees to implement a couple of their recommendations uh, within this time period. Um, it would just be a statement from the city staff and council sort of together, okay. a commitment statement, yeah. And they'd be willing to do that without knowing what the recommendations are? Well, yeah, I mean, that's- mm -hmm. uh, Right. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, yeah. uh, that's a kind of broad, a broad, big blankets is of you know you know that's that's sort of i want to say that's the opportunity that we're facing here you know if we know what we don't know and we're trying to get y'all in creative discourse to help us figure that out and you know if it's something that could make us better and more equitable then yeah of course we're going to try we're going to try our hardest to do it that could be like we're going to we're going to act on recommendations like i imagine some of them will be like it will be like work to figure out what the implementation of that looks like and stuff so i think it's okay. like that we are gonna pick up balls and keep them <laughs> moving <laughs> one of the, i just to if it helps um the ex, i'm just remembering the example that keisha gave from their work in i think winooski or burlington um that they were working with elders from I can't remember which community. Um, one of the uh, one of the new American populations, and they um, th they said it was literally low hanging fruit because they were wondering about being able to pick f fruit from the trees <laughs> in the city park, and um, <laughs> and so then th that was something that the city it was like budget neutral, mm -hmm. and the city could make a, like an official ordinance uh, like to allow it, and it was implemented immediately. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Literally one hundred. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so great. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of applesauce next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then uh, just like an update on, on timing for them, um, which we had kind of discussed last meeting as well, but um, realistically of starting the focus groups after kind of the SRO process that they're literally in right now is over. So looking at realistically starting in January and for these focus groups wanting to have like a minimum of five people if appropriate. And obviously if there's like, you know, tensions within, you know, like they would work, you know, with, with, the, with, the, with the kind of liaisons in the community to make sure that um, it would be, you know, whoever is there would feel like trusting and, and able to be able to share their perspectives and, and want to figure something out. But ideally of having these, you know, focus groups of at least five people um, starting in January. And um, 
recommended that the first one that should pull together would be from with black indigenous people of color um, folks on city staff. And then, but then they said, it's not just city staff, it's also uh, in volunteer committees and people who were on staff or were in committees who have left, um, you know, just wanting to kind of get those, um, those perspectives kind of first to help inform some of these other perspectives. And then they also confirmed that um, we'll have like maybe a couple of these first focus groups before sending out the survey, but that the survey would be happening simultaneously with, um, with while these focus groups are happening. Um, and then having one kind of general big focus group for folks who are really interested with a preference for folks who have um, experiences like income challenges, precarious housing, uh, financial stress, things like that. Any questions about that? That's my like, you know, sick and uh, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Cameron. <laughs> um, just a question. Do you think they'll help me uh, write the, an email to our committees asking for folks if they identify as like BIPOC, if they want to come forward? Because I feel like that could be a, a hard email. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to come across as blunt or exclusionary or something. I, I think I, I'm, I'm happy to take a shot at helping you draft that. And then I think it would be great to run it by them. Yeah, thank you. I would appreciate that. Cool. Yeah. And then I didn't, Jewel, Cameron, didn't you ask too if that, um, the focus group for BIPOC folks on city staff and volunteer committee, if, if that should also be um, LGBTQ plus individuals on city staff and committees? Okay, so I think we need to circle back with them on that, that, that question as well. So great. My instinct is that that's going to be very, two very different experiences. Um, I agree. I just didn't know how they wanted to engage with that up. larger yeah. population in our workforce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think it. Um, yeah. That, I think that's all I would say. And it, yes, it'd be helpful to hear from them, but I would not be surprised if they said like, let's keep it separate. Because um, I think the, the whole purpose of an affinity group like that is to have safety and, yeah, yeah and, and having, you know, white folks in BIPOC space would be, even if they're other marginalized groups, it would be not that potentially. So are you saying just for the purpose of the minutes of what, who's doing what, that um, we're not going to include the LGBTQ in, in so that's just a question I have. If they yeah. want to, if if they would like me to I to ask my staff if they identify that way to be part of an affinity group that just wasn't called out, and we were brainstorming as leadership um, what groups we have internally that they might be interested in speaking to, and that's one of our larger ones. So yes, I think the next steps are Julia will draft and run an email by for inviting city staff and. Shana will ask Asia about other affinity group conversations. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, All right. Oh, Cameron, go ahead. Clarity. I will draft the. I will draft an email. I'll draft some language and then send it to you, and you can yeah. make turn it, that into your own voice because I, I think you you speak way more officially than I do. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. I dropped some y'alls in emails. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, well, then I think our last thing on this part of the agenda is looking at these focus groups and they recommended that there be a, a point person who would be really, you know, like, kind of hold down, like, inviting people and like, literally just like doing the scheduling of the meeting um, and, and things like that. So this is what Keisha had sent over as like a recommendation. And like, for example, like, I don't know any young people in Montpelier. So I don't think that makes sense for me to take on. Um, but they're, yeah, asking for kind of us to put forward uh, if there are folks uh, or other considerations that they should be aware of. Um, so does anyone want to, yeah, volunteer for any of these or unvolunteer for any of these? Um, or any other consider or volunteer other people for any of these. Um, so again, like the responsibilities here is, is, is not to like fully organize it and have all of the relationships and everything else, but to, you know, really be responsible for making sure that the recruiting happens and for scheduling the focus groups. So I'm going to 
think I'm going to volunteer for one of the groups, but I want to make sure I've got my role correct. So I think I think I could be useful with the young people group. Um, and here's why. Um, so I, I am uh, I do participate in a lot of things at the Unitarian Church, which does have a, a pretty solid core group of young people um, in their programming. Um, which could be an end to some folks kind of in the teenage range. Is that what the young people group is? Yeah, and there's also like a racial justice alliance at the high school um, yeah. that has been very involved in, over the past few years. So Yeah, and I think I have connections to some of the other um, kind of youth groups in the city. So I, I can take, a, take the lead on that and see how I do. Awesome. Anyone else? Well, I would help out with um, just to take a few things off Cameron's plate there. I could help out with leaders of community-led and community service. Or, and but I, Cameron, I'd i um, come to you for some suggestions, uh, if I if I may. Um, of course, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. And, I, and I, one thing is, that, I mean, I will see. Uh, by virtue of being on this Vermont uh, Community Fund, I'll see applications from all these service organizations and that yeah. some of them I know and I'll at least have an eye about uh, eye out for which which organizations might we might, might we want to be looking at. Um, Dana, did we get clarity on if they were comfortable with our fire department being included because uh, in the police department section, um, public, our public safety teams uh, like to be included together. They're facing similar populations. So it's Mont Montpelier Police I and oh, okay. Well, I just um, I'm interested our in our team session. We yeah. talked about how the fire department would like to be included. Okay. Julia, did we talk about that? I really can't remember at all. I I'm sorry. I like I I'm getting some, sorry. Can you ask that question again? <laughs> Sorry. Um, if or if it's going to be Montpelier Police and Fire, if they recommend it's Montpelier Police and Fire, or like vaguely remembering that they were like, we would trust you know the city yeah. to make the call right. of like yeah of having you guys make the decision, but I don't trust. And you said they want them to be capped at no. five people. No, no, no. Oh, 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 oh okay, people. good. I was like, oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> we have. Some more of them. Yeah. And then any other considerations that we should name right now? And then as we're having conversations, we'll have to, you know, adjust this for just anything else that's coming up right now that folks think we would need to be aware of. Well, I will say that because I did bring this topic to our leadership team. And our leadership team really does want creative discourse to get sort of an unbiased viewpoint. And so we'd really like um, to do sort of a random assignment, if you will. Um, you know, I know that we have, we make personnel decisions all up and down our chain in every department, right? And so really trying to, to get a list of who those employees are and then randomly assigning them to this. Um, we want as much diverse opinions as possible. We know that there's a lot of selection bias, like self-selection bias, when people say, I would like to be part of this group. We don't know if that would give a real accurate uh, picture. Um, so that's how we would like to approach it. If y'all have any other opinions on that, I'd love to, I'd love to know. Because um, I, I think, I'm just not sure if the folks that would volunteer would be of the same mind of just folks told that this is something they're going to do. That makes a lot of sense <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> Any concerns with that? I guess, I guess the only, I mean, I think that that sounds good and I'm sure that Keisha and the team are skilled at like 
I mean, if somebody would not volunteer because there's something they're not comfortable sharing in a group of their peers or something, like obviously nobody's going to be forced to share anything that they aren't comfortable with. And I'm sure their facilitation will be make it a safe space. Um, but just, I guess, like if you're kind of forcing people to do it, making clear it's, it's to right. get the best possible information for, you know, making the city as inclusive and, you know, all the things that we're striving for and that's the goal of it. So just, I'm, I'm sure it'll be handled great from your team and their team. <laughs> I will add something, uh, Jeremy, if you need help with that young people group, my daughter goes to high school. She's in uh, ninth grade and she work in the <clears throat> committee that Shayna, you know, uh, uh, mentioned before when she was in middle school. And, you know, I can reach out her teachers too. They might help us. Just let me know if, if you need any help. I don't yeah. know other focus groups, <laughs> unfortunately, but through my kids, uh, I will be able to reach out to, you know, school community. Yeah, I think that's great. Thanks, Pollen. Yeah. Jane, will you pass that this chart over to me when it's when you're finished yes. with it? And I'll, I'll put it into the minutes. I'm dropping it in the chat right now. I apologize. I did not send that out with the notes uh, or with the agenda. Um, and so, uh, yeah, they also encourage just as like making a list of who you've reached out to because they're also doing independent outreach um, as well. And so just so you're not, we're not like having four people reach out to the same, you know, person as well, um, being like, you're our token, you know, person who works on immigration in Montpelier or something, you know, like just so we, we kind of have a, have a sense of we're not kind of, yeah, bombarding people or, or things like that. Um, but we won't be sharing those in this meeting or like publicly because it'll be like, here's all this person's contact information that we're reaching out to or, or something like that. Does that all make sense? I feel like I'm Yeah, no, and cool. how will we kind of keep coordinated around a master list? Just specifically. Yeah, if we can't share. So I think that's if each, share it with each. as each person's, yeah, to share it directly with creative discourses. Yep, not kind of through uh, us. Yeah. Awesome. Um. I think that was it for our out outreach updates. Did anyone else just have any outreach, well, you know, conversations well, that they want to, you know, I've had a bunch of here? conversations as a result of sending out all the letters that I sent out for uh, joining the mailing list. And that's been very helpful. I mean, you know, just getting and one person, for example, couldn't didn't know the difference between this group and the police review committee. So I straightened that one out. Um, and then other uh, a few other people you know, contacted me and said that they would do it. Um, Joanna Claire is very interested in, in, in advertising what we do, what we're doing through her newsletter. So, um, and she was going to either put the substance of my letter and the link into her December newsletter. So we'll get more people on it, or she will write her own article and, and use that link, but we'll get more seniors involved in that. Um, so, I mean, I just sort of cast, it was like sowing wheat, you know, just sort of throw about, out a bunch of seeds and a surprising number of people responded. So that's, that's good. Yeah. I wanted to share a little bit of the feedback I got in trying to recruit um, BIPOC folks for the, for the, um, that focus group. Um, I had shared last meeting that that I didn't have the, the the folks I had reached out to didn't necessarily have enthusiastic um, responses, um, and so um, I had a longer conversation with one friend, and um, it seemed like the kind of feedback that Keisha I shared some of it with Keisha and Sue, and it seemed like the kind of stuff that they're sort of like didn't surprise them stuff they've heard before. But I I thought it was important for us all to know it. Um, and a lot of what, it, you know, a lot of what she said was like, you know, um, a lot of what you're, uh, a lot of when focus, when this happens and, and you sort of like ask BIPOC folks to come together and like share their experiences, first of all, a lot of what you're looking for could be found with data. Um, 
and could be found like before you call anybody into the room, like make sure you know exactly what you're asking so that it's actually worth their time. Um, and the sense that most of the time it's not um, because people haven't done their homework before. It's more like, oh, there's some black people. Let's hear what they say. <laughs> um, so making sure that we're not doing that. Um, I think uh, she, um, she talked a lot about, um, you know, maybe she, she made the recommendation that maybe we have that um, we hold that focus group toward the end of the process to say, here's what we've found. Like, how does it strike you? Um, and, you know, th that saying, uh, making sure the questions are very, that we're looking in a sort of a very specific way. So rather than just sort of saying, generally, what's your experience of Montpelier? Like, she was like, you know, what, how do I know what to answer? How do I know what, which parts of my experience to talk about? Like, I don't, I'm not like, you know, daily interacting with city government. So like, I don't know what to tell you, you know? So sh she was saying to make sure that like, by the time we get to the point that we're convening that group that we should have already have some uh, very specific questions in mind that they, they can give very specific feedback to so that they know that it's gonna be worth their time and energy. Um, and, and also, I mean, I think that was one of the, um, when Keisha re recommended having a, a commitment ahead of time from the city, um, that it be very clear in our like mar marketing efforts to get people into the into the focus groups that that this is going to be used this is that like that we're we're committing to this being useful rather than just like another time for you to like you know open up your open up your life and tell us tell us things that are important to you and then yeah. see and see see nothing happen once again. Thanks, Julia. For sharing that. I'm I'm, I'm happy to hear that your um, your friend was able to kind of speak honestly about their experience. It's really useful. Yeah, I was very grateful for that too. Awesome. Um, so then the only other things on our agenda here are of uh, any other business or any police committee updates. Um, from Michael, any SRO updates from Julia or any other updates or, or things that people want to raise um, before just reviewing next steps and, and checking in on our next meeting date. Well, also, Lauren is on that committee also. So oh, you know. I did not realize that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, we had our first meeting and it was good. We have a, you know, we have a, a, a well-organized chair. Um, and so she, um, she sort of whipped us into shape right off. That was good. Um, and we talked about what our agenda for the coming months is going to be, uh, what, what are the issues that are, and, and started uh, getting references to data that we should be looking at uh, in order to have this conversation. Um, and um, what am I leaving out? I don't know. What am I leaving out, Lauren? No, that was most of it. I mean, the, the only other thing that I think it's worth us thinking about was the issue was raised is like part of the charge of that group was stakeholder and community outreach. And we were oh, wondering right. like, are, is there information we could be gathering from the community outreach right. and stakeholder outreach that's already going on that helps inform that discussion. So we're not asking, having mm -hmm. to do the same kind of recruitment again or asking the same people to do a different process. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, being sensitive to not wanting to take over or derail or undermine other information we could get or if, if, you know, so I, I, I was just curious to get you all's thoughts and reactions to can we do both or a little bit of both or, or, or how we might be able to do that or maybe it's like just a conversation with creative discourse and see what they think. Um, but that I just wanted to raise that, see what you all think. I mean, we can obviously ponder this is not something that has to be decided immediately, but if they're going to start in January, if there would be like a piece of it that would be getting information specifically on people's interactions, experiences with our police department. That's a piece of that. We obviously want to think through that with creative discourse. And if yeah. that feels right or good to this group, again, not wanting to like take over that process in any way. I mean, it feels like coordinating these efforts is really important. Um, the danger is a kind of participation fatigue. Um, the worst danger is particularly with kind of, you know, our, our BIPOC folks or other um, kind of underrepresented groups, we're asking them 
to be kind of professional advisors, <laughs> which speaks to some of the concerns Julia just raised. Um, so those those outreaches, those contacts have to be really meaningful and and clear. Um, and so, yeah, I think you know transparency and coordination among these efforts seems to make such great sense. We're a very small community when it comes down to it. So. I wonder too about, so it seems like Shana, we should bring that to a question to yep. our next meeting with them. I flagged it. Yep. Um, and, and Lauren and Michael, like I wonder if um, in, in light of that sort of specific question idea, um, if there were some specific questions that the, that your committee is looking at or asking um, rather than like, what do you think about police? But like, if there was something in particular, um, that would be maybe something that we could uh, advocate for being part of the conversation with, with creative discourse, like the focus groups that we do. Yeah, I mean, I think if we got, if we have the initial conversation with creative discourse and I think it could be incorporated, then I think the police review committee could talk about what, um, what specifically would we wanna get out of that? So mm -hmm. it, yeah, and make sure to, to your earlier point of like <laughs> meaningful conversations that have like mm -hmm. can lead to outcomes and, and all of that, but yeah, totally hear you. So yeah, so if we've got till January, I think that committee's meeting every two weeks mm -hmm. also. So we'll have a couple meetings probably before the um, yes, meeting, so the, at least a, maybe yeah, two. We have, we have two meetings before the end of December. And those meetings are earlier in the week, they're on Mondays, so we can. We can re report back to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Although two days Great. is a long time to keep things in your memory. <laughs> yeah, as we were saying, it's like last week, that was six years ago, I don't know. Yeah. Um, thank you guys. And then any update from the SRO conversations? Not sure. really. I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's moving pretty slowly. Um, I'm not sure they're going to come. Their charge was to come up with a recommendation about SRO, no SRO uh, by December, and it's not looking like that. I, I, I'm not sure that that's going to happen. That is me editorializing. That's not anybody else saying that, but yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Thanks for participating and for reporting back. Yeah. Um, any, anything else, um, for next steps? Cool. So I think our, the next steps that I've got here and Michael would love <laughs> for your note taking to, to affirm here. Um, so Jeremy will drop the letter to the city around equitable budgeting, um, circulate to, um, CJAC committee for individual feedback and then send that final draft, um, to, Cameron. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. And then Cameron will send it to the city. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Julia will draft and run an email by for invitating, invitating invitations <laughs> to, um, to uh, city staff. Um, and we'll ask uh, creative discourses around LGBTQ plus staff conversations. Um, everyone will build uh, and this question around policing conversations. Um, everyone will build their outreach lists and share directly with creative discourses um, and continue to have these outreach conversations. And Cameron will draft a city commitment from the city um, and uh, circulate that. What is the next step there? Okay, so we for yeah, I'd, I'd love to have feedback on that. Awesome. Um, and then everyone will also continue with all of their fundraising commitments and outreach commitments as as uh, predetermined. Um, does that does that sound right? Is there, am I missing things? Okay. Whew. Yeah, so I dropped a lot of balls last time. So I'm like, <laughs> gotta just like copy and paste those to do's to this week. Um, okay, and so then our next meeting that we've all got is December, uh, you know, next Thursday, December 2nd, same time, 5.30 to seven. I assume Julia will also be, be late there, um, but does that time still, still work for folks? Still plan on doing them? Cool. They keep it scheduling the SRO meetings at the same time as this. So that's why I've yeah. been like, but 
yeah. add to that sort of stuff. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so I think on our agenda for, for that meeting is um, just a, I guess we'll, we'll just have like a slew of updates. So maybe just like an update section, which will include the update around the budgeting process. Um, but I don't think we'll need to have like a, another budgeting conversation. I don't anticipate. Um, and then we'll have the um, kind of work plan and outreach check-in and the fundraising check-in. And I don't know if we have other agenda items. So it might be a pretty quick meeting. Mm -hmm. Has anything else that folks um, think we have, we should have on our agenda for the second? I definitely think we should still have it to just touch base on this outreach because there are so many outreach mm -hmm. next steps, but okay. So can, uh, will we talk about other uh, projects or we will be talking all this creative discourse project? You know, we have, I'm very happy. I learned a lot. We are doing a lot, but it has been really quite a bit time. This. We were focusing and talking same things yeah. over and over. I just wonder if we have any action plan, like a future or long run. Helen, I just talked to Jeremy about this this morning. <laughs> I'm just like, right. Of, do we want to do more like strategic planning around what as a committee we want to do? We we did a strategic planning process last winter. Um, that led us to, you know, wanting to hire consultants and, and go through the consulting process in order to um, follow their lead on what to prioritize and how to um, how how to like best spend our time as a as a committee. Um, and so, like from from that process, I think we we were kind of saying like we will respond to requests from the city council around specific agenda items, you know, or like if there's like things that are brought to the city that they want feedback on, CDEC will respond, but not of necessarily taking on our own projects and initiatives. Am I, am I capturing that right, Michael? I think you're the, mm -hmm. really hop off. Is, is, is that, is that? COVID might create lots of social inequality, so we have to be ready, right? We have been talking about mm -hmm. one more year, which will affect lots of families. So I was just thinking, do we have any plan beforehand? Not when it's really, when we really see the impacts, but beforehand, if we think about something, then we will be ready. I don't want to take your time so we can talk about it next meeting. No, yeah. Or maybe I'll touch base with you between yeah. now and then too. Just like, yeah, there are a lot of, uh, you know, organizations, individuals in Montpelier that are, are doing a lot of this like direct service work, mutual aid work. Um, and I, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure what our role is kind of in that, in that matrix, you know, um, I saw a lot of people unmute themselves though. So I want to hear from everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, I mean, I felt like one of the one of the goals and points was like we had been picking some projects that we were kind of interested in and then we when we decided to hire the consultant it was like let's hear from the community instead of us you know like me speaking as a pretty privileged white person of like what i think we should be working on and so i so it was really hoping to like get the kind of input we're going to be getting in the coming weeks to inform like where should we be focused and like to me I, like I love the idea of like the commitment to make sure that like and this group I think the follow through of like what are we hearing from the community and then what are the action steps to do it so that's kind of how I see the flow of this year going um, and I love the idea of like it's you know where are the things knowing we're going to be in tough times like yeah what can we be doing as soon as possible that are like helping prepare for respond to um, these really hard times that we're in so I, I love that trying to think ahead as much as possible but I don't know that was that was how I had you know felt process wise like we were thinking about it for now but yeah it's been a lot of like contract work and stuff. <laughs> so yeah Cameron did you have something else to add I just thought you came off here for that too okay no, I just wanted to see if you wanted to add that as a discussion topic to the next agenda, but we're having the discussion, so I'm gonna... Maybe let's, yeah, let's circle back on it. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Oof, gotta, yeah, <laughs> think about that. All right, 
Well, thank you all. It's after seven, so I do want to let folks go. <laughs> thank you so much for this really, yeah, great conversation. Jeremy, I'm so glad you're part of this team and did all that work. It's great. You're welcome. Happy to do it. Good to Thanks be here with you Thanks for taking notes, Michael, and Ooh. everyone else. Yeah. yeah. Everyone have yeah. a wonderful Bye -bye. Thanksgiving. Don't travel oh, or yeah. go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> Shane, Shane, Shane and Cameron, you'll send me notes so that I have uh, I have your stuff to, to add to. Yes, you're going to really regret that. Mine are crazy today. But. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can. Okay. I always can barely read what I, but I write. But uh, and so it helps, helps have cues from somebody else. Can do. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.